I'm Eddie Muller. I'm a writer, film historian, and the founder and president of the Film Noir Foundation. The Film Noir Foundation was created to rescue films that I discovered were being lost. I've been programming film festivals for a number of years now, and it was kind of distressing to realize that a lot of stuff can actually slip through the cracks. And we kind of shine a light into uh, studio archives to let them know there's some things that maybe they don't even know about. The most recent restoration we did was a picture called Cry Danger from 1951. And in fact, Cry Danger, there was no 35 millimeter print. The only print that was left was a 16 millimeter that was on deposit, which was Dick Powell's personal copy. The Film Noir Foundation funded the restoration of that film. Did you ever hear of a game called Russian Roulette? My father was a sports writer. He wrote about nothing but boxing exclusively. He really was one of these characters. And it was truly a noir world in which he lived. And when I watch pictures like the setup or the harder they fall or champion, it's like I'm watching my father's home movies. Sorry, I'm through with characters like you. There's this endless debate over what is film noir. It might be a camera angle, it might be a narrative. They're not just sleazy detective pictures. It's about beautiful women. Footsteps in the fog, the guys with a mission. And it's about lust, larceny, fatalism. The woman who's, let's say, not Little Miss Goody Girl. They had to be sly, and they had to be seductive, and very subtle. There's one thing we could do that would fix everything for us. One of the key elements of film noir is that the woman, or the dame, or the broad, or the scoit, means to harm the hero. The femme fatale gives an incredibly juicy role to women in the genre of film noir. They're so wicked and complicated and multi-layered and so much fun to watch. When I get through, you'll find out there's such a thing as being too smart. I think that a lot of the femme fatales are actually sort of precursor to feminists because I think they were misunderstood women. So strong they kill you right after breakfast. <laughs> Certainly not a role model unless you're planning a life of crime, a short life. Femme fatales may not be good role models for little girls, but it makes really good watchable films. I grew up just loving Veronica Lake and Lana Turner and Lauren Bacall, and I don't know, maybe there's something you want to emulate about them. They are tough, and the women in the films that I like the most really pretty much set the agenda. Double indemnity, it, it, it all begins with double indemnity. The first time you see Barbara Stanwyck, she appears on the top of the stairs in a towel. She's been sunbathing. It's the first shot of, of her feet, and you see that ankle bracelet she's wearing. And he is mesmerized. And it's a wonderful moment. The minute you see that shot, you know the male character is in trouble. Big trouble. As for the leading men, there were so many. Robert Ryan. Dick Powell. John Garfield. Dan Durier. Burt Lancaster. Lawrence Tierney. And of course, probably the king noir actor was Robert Mitchum. I don't want to die. Neither do I, maybe, but if I have to, I'm gonna die last. And the great thing about noir is you didn't have to be a matinee idol, because Bogart certainly wasn't. You do sell books. Mm -hmm. True, he doesn't fit the true leading man, good look, Clark Gable type of good looks. But for that type of role, the cragginess is really kind of what counts, because it's somebody who's world-weary, cynical, but there is some sex appeal. Oh, you're a mess, aren't you? The Big Sleep is a very hard film to explain, because the plot is more twisted than a hundred pretzels. You're trying to find out what your father hired me to find out, and I'm trying to find out why you want to find out. You could out. go on forever, couldn't you? <laughs> you want me to explain the plot of The Big Sleep? I can't, because no one, no one knew. The Big Sleep is about a really sexy bookstore. Looks like we're closed for the rest of the afternoon. What the Film Noir Foundation is about is we're preserving America's noir heritage. I mean, this is, this is history, and films do die. I mean, once the last negative or the last print of a film is gone, it's gone. What's important about saving these films is that mid-20th century America was a crucial turning point in the history of the country. Prior to the film noir movement, the, the myth in Hollywood was you know, if you work hard, you'll get what you deserve and you'll achieve the American dream. And film noir was basically saying, you know, it doesn't work that way for everybody.